थैंक यू कुमारी जी थैंक यू नाउ श्री तिरुचि शिवा नो 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 ही वांट्स नो आई टेल यू आई वांट ही वांट्स टू गो आई एम एब्सेंट व्हेन आई एक्सटेंडेड टाइम आई सेड दैट देयर इज वन मोर स्पीकर थैंक यू डेप्टी चेयरमैन सर सर द पॉम्पस पैरेडिंग ऑफ वर्ड्स ऑन टेक ओनली 10 मिनट्स सर सर टेक ओनली 10 मिनट्स सर the pompous parading of words on the eve of elections built up expectations in the mind of the people which was of course a good strategy in winning the elections but have they lived up to the expectations is a very big question sir the evidence is on the decline so the president address outlines the policies and programs of the government of all these days what has come out sir sir uh, before uh, i go into the details some schemes have been eulogized in the president address and as well as by the government and as well as the speakers from the treasury bench but they are all repackaged schemes sir sir what was and what is i would just uh, <laughs> cite one or two schemes the accelerated irrigation benefit program earlier is now called as pradhan mantri krishi srijan yojana The Nirmal Bharat Abhiyan is now called as Swachh Bharat Mission. The Prime Minister's Financial Inclusion Program 12th Plan document is now Pradhan Mandri Jan Dhan Yojana. The Rajiv Gandhi Gramin Vidya Yojana, Din Dayal Vidya Gram Yojana. The Ganga Action Plan, Namami Gangs. What was in English is now in Hindi. That's all. There's Ask nothing new, sir. That's cute, old. The old wine in a new bottle. so also sir the present address was silent on the pressing of pollution environmental degradation and climate change above all sir i would like to cite very very important points the president address talks about unleashing potential of the country sir how is it possible to unleash the potential when hard social disharmony and hatred is promoted among the people's mind this does not augur well for the nation so this is not just no, no. an accusation sir this is what is happening all these days so also kindly please look at the architecture of the economy sought to be created by this government sir this government has got a comment that it is pro corporate to prove that though it cannot be totally dispensed of to prove that it says nothing has been said about the public sector enterprises in the country sir our first prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru described the public sector enterprises as the highest command of our economy and we should not forget when the economic crisis which emerged from usa in the 2008 and so when all the european countries were affected india survived only because of the public sector enterprises and the public sector banks sir one should not forget the key role played by these enterprises in creating conditions for the growth and development of our country sir this government is aiming at disinvesting public sector in uh, indirectly supporting the corporates sir now that the public sectors are capable of contesting uh, competing not only with the private sector even globally they are able many public sectors have uh, uh, helped way a lot for our economy i don't know why this government is so very keen in diluting the public sector enterprises so the future then will be a very big question so at the same time we have to also uh, think about some other things very very important this government is climbing the economy is growing at 7.4% 4% now so it is based on revised methodology many economies had contested this methodology so the inflated figures given in the speech raises doubt about the figures of economic growth rate sir whatever may be the growth rate it is well established it is a jobless growth which my friend direct pointed here this is undoubtedly a grave Now situation no job loss yes the growth of the corporate sector and economic growth it generates does not create jobs this is a grave issue very adversely affecting the livelihood of millions of our people there is despair among youth and there is hopelessness across the country the jobless growth combined with rising inequality inequality is posing grave danger to our economy and society sir inequality cannot be just ignored sir 
sir one should just think it's now deeply realized in america that the inequality is the single most challenge to the resilience of the economy of that country and inequality is not inevitable it's only engineered so the organization for economic cooperation and development has reported very clearly and stated that very boldly rather the uk economy would have been more than 20 percent bigger had the gap between rich and poor not widened since 1980s it is after 1980s that privatization started and the role of the state was reduced to a considerable extent in promoting economic activities sir so dr manmohan singh the former prime minister who was a mastermind of uh, uh, the liberalization policy in our country and the privatization he himself has advocated that the resilience of the public sector enterprises have alone helped india to come up very well and succeed sir sir in, instead of addressing the issue boldly the close affiliates or the associates of the government are dividing people on the basis of religion and language we are extremely sorry to point out this thing sir india can never be defined on the basis of one religion emphasize on one religion may appear to be to promote uniformity but it will harm the unity sir our founder leader anna has said that kindly don't confuse between uniformity and unity either one religion or one language or one culture if it is emphasized sir certainly it will negate the plurality and the diversity of this nation this government promised that in 100 days it will unearth all the black money but nothing has been done we are awaiting everyone is awaiting all the schemes that have been promised have not come into effect rather what we hear now is entirely different sir i come to the very important part of our region this president address has not mentioned any solution to the plight of the tamil nadu fishermen which we have been raising many a time even representations have been made still now even after a new government has been shown in sri lanka sir the tamil nadu fishermen are undergoing torture and problems but the government has not given any word any assurance rather it has not taken any steps for the talks of between the sri lankan fishermen and tamil nadu fishermen for a third round of talks had it been initiated by this time the issue would have been settled so it goes unnoticed so also sir uh, disobeying the verdict of the supreme court hmm. not taking into consideration the uh, the river water dispute occurred and also Contrary to the Kaveri Water Tribunal Award, the Karnataka is constructing a dam in Meghadadu. Sir, the Supreme Court has directed the central government that the constitution of the Kaveri Management Board alone would solve the issue, but this government is denying rather. We, I have received a letter from the concerned minister. There is no such move. Sir, all the reports or the replies from the ministers are not consoling or convincing or giving us any hope, sir. So also, sir, I would like to say, uh, Honorable Deputy Chairman was in the chair when I moved a private member bill and later a resolution. We have been requesting for long. Yes, we once opposed Hindi, we were anti-Hindi, but now we have come to a position that let, let Hindi be in its own place. Let all the regional languages which are found, which are in the eighth schedule of the constitution be declared as the official languages of the union. Sir, after a long discussion for more than two and a half years, hours, the Minister of State for the Home in this house announced categorically that this government has no intention of declaring any other language as the official languages of the Union. So this is very, very painful. And so also, uh, my uh, esteemed colleague Mr. Tarun Vijay, who has been coming around in Tamil Nadu, uh, eulogizing Thiruvalluvar and pricing very high, that he is the only person who could be held secular and all, that Thirukural we asked to be declared as a national text that has also been declined by this government. But what else happens, sir? Attempt is being made to remove the word secular and socialism from the preamble of the constitution. Sir, we have been listening to the words of many other people who are responsible persons which are not warranted. Sir, what is needed is to address the issues of the people who have uh, reposed their confidence on Narendra Modi ji and the eve of elections. But all these days, we have seen nothing which could be applauded, which could be prized. Sir, there is nothing late, sir. The President address, which outlines the policies and programs of the government, has not given us anything concrete. 
anything hopeful and so sir with pain so we have been affected the government has to change uh, their mood they should stop talking in a divisive language sir india is a secular country india is multiracial multinational multicultural and multilingual nothing harm should happen on behalf of the government or from any other side if it happens from any other side it's the duty of the government sir having my foot firm on convention i thank the president and i welcome this motion